we have learned how to write an inline style and an embedded style. We will now look at an external file. An external file is merely a separate text file that contains the CSS rules and it is saved with the .css extension. It is referenced in the HTML document using the link tag. This is a one-sided element with two needed attributes, rel and href. The type attribute is no longer required in HTML5. After you have decided on the styles that you will be using, you can remove them from inside the embedded style sheet, place them in a text file, save it with a CSS extension, and reference with the link element. The link element is placed on top of the style element. It is possible to also have embedded styles in addition to external styles. You can have one external style that would contain all of the shared styles among documents, or you might have several external styles. Some might be shared by all files, and some might be specific only to a certain file. Cascading style sheet rules are applied to what we call a selector. We have already looked at the element selector, meaning any HTML element can be used as a selector. However, those style rules would apply to every existence of that HTML element in that document. There are times when this might not be useful. We also have a class selector, an ID selector, or what is referred to as a contextual or descendant selector. There are other more advanced selectors that will be covered in a future class. They are an attribute, pseudoclass, structural pseudoclass, and pseudoelement. So let's first review the element selector. Here we see in our body we have an H1 element. If we wanted to apply a style to that, the syntax for an element selector is merely the name of that element. So here in my embedded style tag, in the head section, I have my H1 selector, and in the curly braces, I have my two style rules. We will now look in the body section, and here I have an ID attribute, and its value is head. The ID attribute exists for one purpose only, and that is to uniquely identify a part of the page for purposes of styling it with CSS. The ID attribute is also used with the JavaScript language. Therefore, it is very important that the value be unique. This means that you would not have another ID equals head in the same document. IDs are mainly used to indicate main or specific parts of the page. The syntax which references the ID selector is the value of that ID preceded by the hash or the pound sign. So if I were to look in the embedded style sheet and see a hash mark, I should know that that refers to an ID of that value somewhere in that page. Those styles will be uniquely applied only to the element that has that specific ID value. If you look into the body section, you will see that I have an H1 element and an H2 element. They both have a class attribute. This is an HTML attribute that has one purpose only, and that purpose is applying CSS. So we can give the value of the class any name we choose. Here I am assigning them each the same class with the value of head. The syntax of a class selector is the value of that attribute preceded by the period. So here in the embedded style sheet you see period head. Class selectors can be repeated over and over again in the same document. If there were a common set of styles that we wanted applied in several locations, it would make sense to create a class and apply those styles using that class. If you look in the body section, we have a paragraph. Inside that paragraph, we have a span element, and it contains the word smart. A span is an inline element 
that is commonly used to enclose content for the purposes of applying a style to it. If we wanted to access that word smart, only that word smart, because it is enclosed by a span tag, we can access that as a descendant or contextual select. Contextual merely means in the context in which the code exists. So looking at our style tag, here we have P space span. And there has to be a space between them, not a comma, but a space. What that is saying, the span tag, that is a descendant of P. Style is applied to the rightmost part of that select, and it is essentially read from right to left the span that is enclosed by a P. If you look in the body section here, we have a nav element with a unique ID of XYZ. Inside, we have a child element, or a descendant, which is an unordered list. Supposing we wanted to uniquely style that unordered list. Because it's already located in a unique location, because the nav has a unique ID, we can use that ID to access that list. So if you look in the style section, here we have pound XYZ space UL, meaning that that specific style will only be applied to the UL that is a descendant of ID equals XYZ. You will commonly see descendant selectors being used with unique IDs. In that manner, we can access every element within that unique ID individually, and there will be no conflict with that same named element in the rest of the document because that ID will be a unique section. We also have the ability to access a direct descendant or child. So let's take a look at what we have in the body. Here we have a section element. Inside the section element, we have an H2, a paragraph, and an article. Now the article has two descendants or children, an H2 and a P. So the, the HTML document consists of a hierarchical relationship of elements that compose a parent-child descendant structure. If we look now at the style rule, pound XYZ greater than H2, that means it is a direct descendant. If the greater than was not there, it would just mean it's a descendant, any descendant. It can be a child, a grandchild, a great-grandchild, etc. But that greater than sign means it has to be a direct descendant. So if we look at ID equals XYZ, we see that it does have a child H2 element. It also has a child article element. Now the article element contains an H2. That H2 is not a direct descendant of ID equals XYZ. It is a descendant, but it is not a direct descendant. We have the ability to narrow down our choices with the syntax of our selectors here. We also have the ability to select an adjacent sibling. Siblings are elements that are all on the same level. So if we look at our HTML, here we have the same code. We have our section. In the section, we have an H2 and a P and an article. That H2, P, and article are all children of the section. Therefore, they are also siblings. Inside the article tag, there are two children, and therefore they would be siblings. So if we look at our code, H2 plus P, what that is saying is that we want to apply the style to the P element that is a direct sibling of H2. So here we have two H2 elements, and the P is a direct sibling of both of them because it comes directly after. We also have what is called the tilde, and that allows us to select a general sibling. Let's take a look at our body. Here we have a section element, and the section contains five children, therefore they are all siblings. Notice that there are two H2s, and they all have at least one paragraph after them. So if we were to use the syntax H2 tilde P, we want to access all of the Ps 
that are a sibling. It doesn't have to be a direct sibling. It can be any sibling. And you see here that the second sibling will be included in this select. We also can group selectors. If we wanted to apply the same style to multiple selectors, all we have to do is list them with commas. And this applies also to IDs and classes. They can all be grouped together in order to apply the same style. So here I have an example of different selectors. On the right, we see the parent-child relationship of the elements. Over on the left, we see the asterisk selector. The asterisk stands for all. So if I apply the style to the asterisk selector, it will be applied to every element. If we look at the next selector, that is the P element. If I apply the style to the P element, it would apply to every P in that document. And we see here that there are three matches. Looking at the bottom selector, H1 comma H2 span, if I applied a style to those three elements as a grouping selector, you see that it would apply to every instance of them anywhere in this document. The next selector, P space B, that is a descendant or contextual selector. That style rule will be applied to a B that is a descendant of P. So here we see that we have two P elements that both have descendant Bs. One P element actually has two descendants. One is a direct descendant or a child. The one is essentially a grandchild. However, that style rule applies to any descendant. The next style rule, P greater than B, only applies to a B that is a direct descendant of P. So if we look at our diagram here, we see that we would only match two Bs, not three. Finally, we have the adjacent sibling. We are applying the style to the P that is an adjacent sibling to the H2. So here we have two H2 elements, and they both have an adjacent sibling P. Although there are three Ps, it is only matching the first because only one can be adjacent. In CSS, we have this concept of inheritance. Children inherit from parents. So any styles applied to a parent would also apply to a child element or a descendant element inside that parent element. Again, if we were to apply a style to the body tag, it would be inherited by every element. One thing I would like to point out, not all styles are inherited. When we learn about the box model styles, they are not inherited. Your basic text styling properties are inherited. So here's an example of inheritance. Here we have a style rule applied to the P element. And in my HTML, you see that P element contains a child B element and that style would be inherited also. Cascading style sheets are so named because of the cascading order in which they are applied. This refers more so to the order in which styles are applied in the event of a conflict. You can have styles being applied to the same part of the page that are coming from inline styles, embedded styles, and external styles, and everything essentially applies. However, if there was a conflict, meaning you were applying a color property from two different locations, we have a conflict. So the cascade determines in which order the style rule will be applied. HTML attributes take first precedence. However, we don't use them anymore in the document. For our purposes, inline styles take first priority, embedded styles take next priority, external styles take least priority. Now, the browser defaults can take priority also. So if a user has browser defaults, that might take priority, which is why we generally set our global styles for the body tag to override the browser defaults. We also have a concept of specificity. The order in which styles are applied in the event of a conflict also is determined by the nature of the selector. 
For example, an ID selector would take precedence over a class selector. A class selector would take precedence over a contextual or descendant selector. The, and that selector would take precedence over an element selector. So if we look at this HTML, we see that we could have styles coming from an element selector plus an ID selector plus a class selector. And they would all be applied. The only time that we have to worry about whether a style will be applied is in the event of a conflict, meaning that the same property is being used in two or more locations, and then the orders of specificity would determine which value is applied. In essence, the closest rule applies. Again, other rules still apply. So if you look at what I have here in the style tag, and this is not a good way of writing styles. You generally would not use three element selectors of the same to apply the, the styles. All the styles would be applied to the same selector. I'm doing this in order to illustrate a point in a simple manner. So in the body, we have one P. In our head section, we have styles coming in from three different selectors. In two selectors, we have the same property. So there is going to be a competition for that property. Will the color be red or will the color be green? The rule is the closest style takes precedence in the event of a conflict, so that color would be green. However, the font family property would still be applied as that is being applied to the P selector. Multiple styles can come in from different sources in the event of a conflict for a repeated property, the cascade and inheritance rules determine which value is being applied. The important keyword takes precedence over everything. I urge you to use this with discretion.